Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. I wanted to show you guys my top 10 jazz records um, of all time for me. Now, uh, this is just my opinion. Uh, I've not wanted to do a jazz video because I'm not an expert on jazz. I like jazz an awful lot. Um, there's certain things I really like about jazz, but in my circles of my friends, and I've, I've some friends that really like jazz, and so usually if I get like a jazz grill, something really big, um, I know that they'll enjoy it more than I will, and so I'll sell it a lot of times. So I don't have a ton of jazz records, but the jazz records I have, um, I really do love. I've got maybe 60, 75 jazz records, and um, this is my top 10. So there's a couple more. It was, it was, it was kind of hard to whittle it down to top 10, but these are the top 10 that I actually have uh, that are among my favorites. So we'll get started with number 10. Uh, this is Duke Ellington and John Coltrane. Uh, this is an original mono press on Impulse. I actually uh, bought a whole collection just to get this one record. This is an original. Um, and if you know me, this one has a little bit of a, a sentimental factor uh, for me because uh, when I first bought my first collection, there was a, um, if you've heard the story, I, I won't go into it, but uh, I bought 7,000 records. It was the first collection I ever bought. It was huge. And I didn't know if I should do it. This is before records really came back. And... Um, I just made a deal with myself. I said, I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to pick out uh, one record. And if it's good, I'll buy the whole thing. That's how it was done. But that's how, that's how I determined it. And that was this record. Um, and it was a reissue of it. And I still actually have that exact copy. But um, and that's how I knew to buy the collection. But that's why it's kind of sentimental to me. But at the time, I had been listening to it online a lot. And I really was trying to get into jazz. And I was like, well, Duke Ellington and John Coltrane, both on the same album, has got to be good. And that, that logic, um, it worked out for me. So, um, but what I really like about this record is Duke Ellington's more of a structured, polished um, musician that's that's very, you know, more, more of a pop icon uh, than John Coltrane is. John Coltrane is very, um, he improvises a lot. He's uh, a little more rough around the edges. And so I think it takes a little bit more of a, I don't know, if you're into jazz, he's more along the, we'll get into that farther down this video, but more along the spiritual jazz, soul jazz, um, you know, hard bop jazz than, than Ellington was. You know, Ellington had his orchestra and all that stuff a lot of times. So to have them both at the same time, you had the duality of a really nice, cool jazz, soft uh, Ellington on, on the keys, and then you had Coltrane just blazing some really good heat in there. It was just, it's a great combo. I think it exposed a lot of people to that um, the more looser jazz that, that John Coltrane has to offer. So um, another one is Bill Evans and Jim Hall Undercurrent. Uh, Bill Evans is one of my favorite piano players. This this one I actually um, I saw this at a yard sale, uh, and uh, this was when you know I was young, and this is the exact copy I saw at the yard sale for a dollar. And uh, the cover alone, I was like, I have to get that. So I grabbed it, brought it home, and it was jazz. And just Bill Evans' keys on his piano on this is just so good. Jim Hall coming in on a guitar. Um, and it's just those two. Um, just phenomenal stuff. For me, you know, this is probably not on a lot of people's top 10, but for me, I absolutely love this record. And Bill Evans is an a incredible. Uh, piano player but along with the artwork it's just a great album i love it i have it this pressing and then i have a, a mofi pressing them as well but that's number nine uh number eight is uh cannonball adderley something else uh this is on blue note um it has miles davis hank jones sam jones art blakey uh you know and i mentioned this before in my videos when i do briefly talk about jazz that if you're getting into jazz uh it's really interesting it's different than any other type of music you are you have a lineup of musicians that are playing and you got one kind of leader that's leading it um this is cannibal idol is only released on blue note i believe um and so you've got miles davis um he earlier on kind of played as a side man but uh, up until this point in his career he didn't play as a side man very much but he was um cannibal idol was in his sextet uh but anyways uh this is a great record uh, this is, I guess, what they call. I'm going to go into this a little bit more, but there's a lot of different subgenres of uh, jazz. There's bebop, there's bop, there's hard bop, there's soul jazz, there's 
spiritual jazz, there's modal jazz, there's avant-garde. So uh, this is more of the bop, hard bop type stuff. Um, but this is a really fantastic record. Um, and just the, but as I was saying with the lineup, when you look at the lineup or whatever, you hear a certain, you're like, oh, I like that trumpet. Who's playing that trumpet? Oh, that's Miles Davis. You know, oh, I like, I like the, that, that, those drums. You know, who's that? That's our Blakey. So you're going to hear more about um, all these guys further down, uh, but they accompany each other and it, the combination really makes the record unique. So that's what I, I really like that about jazz. Number seven is Grant Green Idol Moments. This is the uh, Analog Productions 45 RPM pressing of this is, is great. I had an original press of this and one of my friends really, really wanted it. So I sold it and, and uh, he actually traded me this. So that's how I have it. But this is Joe Henderson, Bobby Hutcherson, Grant Green, uh, Duke Pearson, Bob Crenshaw and Al Harewood on um, drums. This is a, I really like Grant Green. It was hard for me to pick a Grant Green album that I like the most. This one's probably the one I like the most. As far as like jazz guitar players go, in my opinion, Grant Green takes the cake. He's the best. Um, I love just his phrasing and just, um, I don't know. I love the way he plays. Um, Joe Henderson's incredible as well. Um, as a guitar player, you know, jazz is not my first genre to get into but as i got into it i realized you know, how complex um a lot of the jazz numbers are for guitar players i can i don't know that i could ever do it um but grant green is just a phenomenal player and it's a great record right, number six is saxophone colossus by sonny rollins uh this is an incredible record uh one of my favorites uh i actually had an original press of this which the original pressings of this go for thousand dollars and up they're crazy but i had one and a really good friend of mine wanted it and same deal i was like well you know i'll pass it along if it's a psych record and it's worth that much i might keep it but uh for jazz i'm okay with the ojc as far as um reissues go a lot of times you can get really good they call them ojc's original jazz classic i think is what it stands for but really good quality uh for like 20 bucks or less some of the earlier ones are better um, but anyways, that's, that's, I think that's just for prestige stuff, but this is a uh, OJC pressing. So saxophone Colossus, great record. This really launched Sonny Rollins. I think it, it, it kind of made him a legend. Um, just a really iconic jazz album. And it's just phenomenal. Um, just to hear him on this record, just blow. It's, it's killer. So that's number six. Number five is Miles Davis kind of blue. This is original six eye pressing. It's got a cannonball Adderley. Paul Chambers, James Cobb, John Coltrane, Bill Evans, and Wynton Kelly. Uh, that lineup is insane, first of all. Uh, there's so much to be said about this record. This is a really significant and important record for jazz. Um, I mean, it's got Coltrane, Bill Evans. Those are two of my favorites. Paul Chambers is on a ton of stuff. You don't hear his name often, you know, if you're not deep into jazz, but he's on a ton of stuff. Wynton Kelly, James Cobb, all that. But what's really cool and important about this record is um, this is one of the first really big defining moments for modal jazz. So modal jazz is one of the subgenres of jazz that I was talking about earlier, but you had bebop jazz. Like bebop jazz is what everybody was used to at the time. Uh, it was a lot of chords repeated over and over pretty much. That's the, that's the basic explanation of it. Um, hard bop was, a uh, was in the same vein, but more influenced by blues and soul. Uh, modal was a concept that uh, Miles Davis was exploring because he just kind of got bored uh, with everything else and so he went into modal jazz. Modal jazz is more, uh, it'll be like one or two chords, very simple chords and uh, a lot of exploration in um, improvisation in between those chords. So basically you had to make sure that the listener didn't get bored with those two chords. So you had a lot of, um, a lot of room to improvise in those chords. So modal jazz is kind of hard to explain and kind of hard to understand, but that is, if you listen to it, there's so many different types of jazz. You know, a lot of people will listen to jazz and it all sounds the same, but when you really break it down, you listen to the chords. Um, it, there's, a lo there's a lot of differences between like bebop jazz and modal jazz. So this is one of the first prime examples of modal jazz. It's very important for the genre and music in general. Uh, number four is Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Uh, you got Lee Morgan on trumpet, Benny Golson on tenor sax, Bobby Timmons, Merritt on bass, uh, Art Blakey on drums. Uh, this is one of my favorite records. Uh, it's just, 
killer hard bop. This is a great example of a hard bop record. Um, it's just one of my favorites. Uh, Art Blakey's probably my favorite jazz drummer. Lee Morgan is up there, man. He is dynamite. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about Lee Morgan in a minute. But uh, this is number four. Phenomenal record. Um, this is one I always look for an original press. This is an original mono. Um, just incredible stuff. Uh, number three is Soul Station. Uh, Hank Mobley. This has got Hank Mobley, Wynton Kelly, Paul Chambers, Art Blakey. So a lot of the same guys that were um, on Kind of Blue, as I mentioned before, but this is a hard bop record. My favorite uh, Hank Mobley record, uh, this is number three on my list, top 10 jazz. Number two is Lee Morgan, The Cooker. This is a fantastic record. Another one I had an original press of, but a friend needed it, so I sold it. Um, but it's Killer Blue Note. Um, it's got uh, Pepper Adams, Bobby Timmons, Paul Chambers, Billy Joe Jones on drums. This is an incredible record. What really makes this one cool is um, Lee Morgan was only 19 years old when this was recorded. Super young to be as good as he was on trumpet. Um, his solos are blazing fast. Some of them are double time, like really, really killer stuff. Um, and just for such a young kid, I mean, he only lived to be 33 years old. Really interesting story. He got murdered. Uh, but yeah. This is a really great record, uh, number two on my list, Lee Morgan, The Cooker. If you're wanting to get into jazz, this is a really, really great place to start. Um, it is up there. It's hard to say that there's another record that's better than this for me, but there is one that's better. Uh, number one, John Coltrane, Love Supreme. Uh, this is an original stereo press. I got it at the yard sale for two bucks um, years and years ago. Uh, but this is a really cool and important record. John Coltrane was doing uh, a lot of different stuff at this time. Um, this is what a lot of people call soul jazz or spiritual jazz. Basically, uh, John Coltrane was one of the pioneers to explore like spirituality through jazz. So it would it wasn't just like you know Christianity music, but it also um, had influences from like you know Indian culture, like Buddhism, all sorts of other religions as well but he was very um, open about exploring religions and uh, as like jazz being a form of uh, connection with God. A lot of people uh, said that John Coltrane hit with his solos and his improvisation had a direct line from God because his, uh, his improvisation didn't have a lot of runs in it. Like a lot of people uh, when they're improv and they have runs in their music, that goes with guitar players or or anything like even like Eric Clapton and Steve Ray Vaughan and, and Jimi Hendrix, they have runs, which is a certain sequence of notes that they that they repeat a lot. John Coltrane didn't do that a lot. He had a lot of uh, really original stuff that just seemed to come out of nowhere. So that's why a lot of people say that. That's what I really like about John Coltrane. After this, he really got more into free jazz, like avant-garde jazz, a little bit um, more out there stuff if you're not used to it. But uh, this record is, a perfect jazz record in my opinion as far as i'm concerned it's my favorite so if you're wanting to get into jazz um you know my biggest advice would be to start with uh with one that's easy to get something like kind of blue or lee morgan the cooker uh blue notes doing a bunch of tone poet reissues which just google that look it up it's really great um high quality sound and reissues of of a lot of blue note classics but start getting in there listen to some jazz and and like key in on the ones the players that you really like and explore them and find other records with them on it so if you guys enjoyed this video hit the subscribe button follow us on instagram and uh we'll see you next time thanks for watching